OK, so we're going to have a look at the sum of digits of certain square numbers. Now, if you look at 10 squared, the sum of digits of 10 squared is equal to 1. The sum of digits of 11 squared is equal to 4. The sum of digits of 12 squared is 9. There's a really nice pattern emerging here. Then the sum of digits of 13 squared is equal to 16, your next square number. Unfortunately, if we go on to 14 squared, the sum of digits is still 16, which is a square number, but this pattern isn't quite continuing there. And if you go back to 9 squared, the sum of digits is 9, which is again a square number, which I think is really interesting. But what's especially interesting about these four examples is not only is the sum of digits equal to a square number, but the sum of digits is actually equal to the sum of digits of your original number squared. So this is a little bit difficult to say out loud, so let's just write out what we mean here. If you take 10 squared, so the sum of digits of 10 squared is equal to the sum of digits of 10 squared. If we take the sum of digits of 11 and then square this, this is equal to the sum of digits of 11 squared. The sum of digits of 12, when we square this, this is equal to the sum of digits of 12 squared. And similarly, the sum of digits of 13, when we square this, this is equal to the sum of digits of 13 squared. So we're going to try and understand why this is happening for these numbers. We'll also try and answer the question of which other numbers does this rule work for. So we're going to be interested in answering when is the sum of digits of n, when we square this, when is this equal to the sum of digits of n squared? And given a problem like this, a really useful first step could just be to list some of the numbers which do satisfy this property and see if we can find some patterns. So looking at this list, you'll immediately see there don't seem to be any numbers which have a digit 4 or greater. There's also maybe some restriction. You can't have a 2 and a 3 together in the number, and perhaps we also can't have more than one 3 appear in our digits. But then if we look at the next number, 131 squared, this is 17,161. So we want the sum of digits here to be 25, 5 squared. But unfortunately, the sum of digits here is only 16, so this doesn't fit our rule either. If we have a look at 222 squared, this is an interesting one. This is 49,284. So we want our sum of digits here to be 36, but actually the sum of digits is only 27. So again, this doesn't fit our rule. So maybe there's some restriction here on the number of twos we can have in our number. But then if you look at 2022, so our current year squared, this is 4,088,484. And if we sum all of the digits here, this is actually equal to 36. So we can say that our current year does satisfy this rule. Unfortunately, this won't happen again for another 78 years now. So clearly there's more to it. And actually, even if we just look at ones, if you have a number with nine consecutive ones squared, if you look at the sum of digits of this, this is 81, so this does satisfy our rule. Then if we add another one, so then we've got 10 ones in a row, and then we square this. I won't write out the number, but the sum of digits of this is 82 instead of 100. So this doesn't satisfy our rule. So there's clearly more to it, and what we'll need to do in order to actually understand what's going on is we'll do some of this multiplication, squaring these numbers by hand to see what's going on. So we'll have a look at an example of one which doesn't work and an example of one which does work. So for 123 squared, we'll see that this doesn't satisfy our rule. So just to multiply this out by hand, let's start with our units column. We have 3 times 3 just gives us 9. Then for our tens column, we've got 20 times 3, and we've also got 3 times 20. So this gives us a total contribution of 12. So we carry the 1 there. For our hundreds column, we have 3 contributions. 3 plus 4 plus 3 gives us 10. Add this 1, gives us a contribution of 11. Carry the 1 again. Then finally, for our thousands column, we get a contribution of 4 there. So adding the 1, we get 5. And for our ten thousands, we just get the 1 from 100 times 100. So you can see here that the sum of digits is 18, whereas we were hoping our sum of digits might be 36, from 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 squared. So what's gone wrong? Let's compare this with one which does work, so 122 squared. For our units we just have 4 from 2 times 2, then for our tens we get 8, we have 8 once again here, and we get 4 and 1 to finish off. So you can see the difference here is we're not doing the carrying, and this is actually what's key to the rule working or not. So if you think about the sum of all of these numbers in our grid here that we've circled, the sum of all of these is actually 36, and the same here, the sum of all of these numbers is 25, from 1 plus 2 plus 2 all squared. So we're just doing 1 plus 2 plus 2, multiply all of those by 1, 2, and 2. When we sum all of these, we're going to get 25. 
So here, because we don't have to do any carrying, the values stay the same. So these contributions, which sum to 25, remain as 25. Whereas here, when we do the carrying, we had a contribution of 9, so this stays as 9 for our contribution to the digits. Whereas here, we've got a contribution of 12. But this is only really adding 3 to our total, because we've turned that 12 into a 1 and a 2. And similarly here, our contribution of 10 just really gets turned into a contribution of plus 1 in the next column. So that explains where our two nines worth of digit value have gone here. So the actual answer to this problem is just as simple as saying any number where when you square it you have to carry isn't going to satisfy our rule, and any number where if you can square it without having to carry along the way, then this will satisfy our rule, that the sum of our digits all squared is going to be the same as the sum of the digits of the square number. And now we can actually check some of our earlier ideas against this framework of not having to carry when we calculate our number squared. So we were saying earlier that perhaps we're not allowed to have a 2 and a 3 together in our original number for it to satisfy this rule. And you can see here that if you calculate 2 times 3, you'll also have a 3 times 2 contribution in the same place value slot, so you can verify this if you like. But this gives you a contribution of 12 at least in that place value slot, which means that you are going to be forced to carry there. So you can't have a 2 and a 3 in order for this rule to work. And similarly, you can look at, we were saying that perhaps you're not allowed to have two threes together, and this will give you a contribution in one of your place value slots of three times three plus another three times three, giving you at least 18, and again, forcing you to carry. And we were also saying that perhaps we're not allowed to have any digits greater than or equal to four. So if you had a four in there, even if there was just a one four, and you'd have to somewhere calculate four times four when we multiply out, this gives you 16 and forces you to carry. And similarly for 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9, you're forced to carry when we carry out the multiplication there. So we can conclude then that if we want the sum of our digits of our number or square to be equal to the sum of the digits of the square, we're not allowed to include any digit greater than or equal to 4. Now if you're not entirely happy with this, not having to carry, this doesn't feel entirely mathematically rigorous. I'm sure there must be a nice simple way of expressing this, but there's a really beautiful way of expressing this actually using matrices, because if you think we're doing lots of multiplying and adding, this is just crying out in this array for some linear algebra. So there's a really nice way, let's imagine we wanted to multiply 123 by itself. We can put this into a matrix, a square 5 by 5 matrix like this, and we put the 3 so that this is in the middle, and then fill in the rest with zeros. What we're going to do is multiply this row by an upside down version of this vector, so 3, 2, 1, then you'll see here, when we multiply this row by this column, we get 3 times 3, which gives us the calculation we needed for our 1's column. So we get a contribution of 9 there for our 1's. Then if we want to go over to our 10's column, just like moving along our place value, all we need to do is shift all of this along to the right and fill in the rest with zeros. Then we'll get a contribution of 2 times 3 and 3 times 2, which is what we had for our 10's, giving a contribution of 12 there. Then similarly for our hundreds, we just move along further to the right, fill in with zeros, we get 1 times 3 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 1, giving us a contribution of 10 there. Then we can carry on moving further to the right, we can just fill this in with zeros, or if you like you could even put your 3 here and this would just get multiplied by 0 so it wouldn't affect the outcome. But basically we get a 1 times 2 plus a 2 times 1, giving us our contribution of 4 for the thousands column. Then I'll just fill in the rest with zeros, or you could put 2 and 3 here if you prefer we get 1 times 1 for our 10,000s, giving us 1 there. So this just feels like a slightly more rigorous mathematical framework here for saying, instead of having to say you don't have to carry, we could put this into a matrix, do the multiplication by this upside down vector, and then it's just a simple matter of checking, do you have anything which is greater than or equal to 10 in here? Because that means that you're forced to carry when you calculate n squared.